This is the Yumi Digi A7 Pro, a cheap smartphone that's actually compatible with US carriers and Canadian carriers. So let's review this phone and see what we got. Okay, let's talk build quality for the Yumi Digi first. I'll say this phone is really heavy. Like compared to my uh, Xiaomi Mi 8. This phone is probably a third heavier than my Mi 8, which is actually quite a lot, actually. Um, that being said, it actually feels very well built. Um, on the side here, you have a metal band that runs around the entire phone. And then on the back, you have a nice glass, like reflective V. It kind of looks like a Huawei back, except without the color change. But um, as you can see, it kind of has like a wave, wavy, reflective surface. Um, on the back, it's pretty plain. You have your um, fingerprint sensor, the logo, as well as this quad camera setup, which kind of resembles another phone. I won't say which one, but whatever. And you can see that there is a significant camera bump on there as well. Again, on the side, you have your power buttons and your volume up buttons. They're actually fairly far down the phone. So if you're holding kind of like this, you can reach it like this. So it's okay, I have to get used to it because my other phones, the buttons are probably way up here. So that's just something to get used to. And on this side, we have the SIM SIM tray, which can actually hold two SIMs as well as a micro SD card. So all three at once, which is very nice. And then we have a USB-C slot, sorry, a USB-C jack for charging your speaker grill, as well as a headphone jack. And up top, we have absolutely nothing. Okay, let's take a look at the front and look at the bezels. I'm gonna turn the screen on. As, as you can see, the bezels are pretty small. The side bezels are maybe one to two millimeters thick. The same with the top bezels, and then you have a tiny notch here. The bottom bezels are a little bit bigger. You're looking at maybe four to five millimeters. Overall, the Yumi Digi A7 Pro actually looks like quite a nice phone, especially considering the price, which you can check down below in the description. Okay, let's take a quick look at the screen here. We have a 1080p display it's a 6.3 inch I think. actually no i think it's a six inch screen um it actually looks pretty good um i've been using an amoled display for the past two years but this lcd actually looks good like as you can see the screen is very bright the colors are very decent um i would say that even some of the colors i prefer compared to an amoled where it's a little bit oversaturated the LCD here um, basically looks like a very well calibrated yet very colorful display. So I'm actually quite surprised that they fit such a good looking display in the Yumi Digi A7 Pro. So no complaints there. I like the display. It gets very bright. You can even see it in sunlight and the colors look very good as well. The other thing to note is that the minimum brightness actually goes pretty low as well. So it does not blind you when you are, um, you know, watching or reading something at night. So that's actually a upside to this as well. So yes, overall, very happy with, with the display here. Okay, let's listen to the sound here and well, spoiler alert, it's not great. It's very loud, which is nice. That's not even max volume. So there's supposed to be a couple of bass drops there, but you probably can't hear it because the bass drops are not very bassy. So this thing right here doesn't have a lot of bass. I would say that everything about the speaker here is good. Volume, mids, um, highs, they're all good, but bass is not. So if that is something that you do care about, then yeah, this speaker's not for you. Okay, the battery life here is impressive, right? So you have it like a 4,000 milliamp hour battery with a fairly low power MediaTek processor. Um, yeah, I could easily get two days with this thing. I think my record screen on time was nine hours in one day. That being said, I wasn't gaming all nine hours. You know, it was Chrome, we're doing some Reddit, uh, reading some news and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, in that way, it wasn't super intense, but nine hours is still very, very good. 
Um, I really have no complaints about the battery life here and it's enough even for a battery fanatic like this guy who's filming the video. Um, let's, let's talk about the charging speed. Uh, this is not quick charge, it's not fast charge. I would say it's like decent charge. So I charged it for about, I think 45 minutes and I got all the way up to 90, or just like 30 to 80%. So 45 minutes, uh, you, you get about 50% battery life. That's, yeah, that's, that's not fast charge, but it's decent charge. <laughs> okay, or anyway, let's move on to the software here. Okay, talking about software, this thing, the more I use it, the faster it gets. But you see, you still see stutter a lot more often than you would in other phones. I mean, I will admit that this is a cheap phone. It's, it's not an expensive phone. But if you compare this to, for example, some of the cheaper Xiaomi Redmi um, phones with a Qualcomm processor, it's faster, especially single core performance. Um, and the reason why this thing is slower is because the single core performance of the MediaTek chip is not very good. And I, I'm not gonna explain it here because it'll take way too long. I probably will make it another video just explaining why MediaTek chips in general, well, they're not very good. Um, and yeah, but so as you, as you can see, swiping performance here improves as you keep going because I guess it caches in memory or something like that. But if we open up some things, let me just do this. Yeah, you can see there's there's a pause there before it opens up. And if we open up, let's say YouTube Music, same thing. There's a pause before it does that, and open up YouTube. That was instant because I already had it open. So if you already have it, <coughs> excuse me, in the RAM, and it opens up very quickly. So if I open up Chrome again, it's instant. If I open up YouTube Music again, it's instant. Um, yeah, in terms of multitasking performance, MediaTek has never really been bad at that. It's just their single core performance where you start seeing a little bit of a slowdown. Okay, uh, before we, we move on to gaming, I'll talk a little bit about the Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and the GPS. The GPS is decent. I'm not going to open up maps because I, I don't want to show my location, but the GPS is decent. There's really nothing bad about it. Um, that being said, I will say that the Xiaomi that I've been using has really bad GPS, and this is a flagship device. So for a non-flagship device, the GPS is actually fine. Bluetooth works fine as well. I connected my game pad up to this, as well as my um, some headphones, and, it, and they work fine. Uh, range is about 10 meters. Uh, so no, not 10 meters, 10 feet, which is three meters. Wi-Fi reception is a little bit below average, but nothing really to complain about. Okay, let's move on to gaming. Okay, one last thing before I forget, before we move on to games, I'll show you what bands are compatible with it. So this is what I can do, and then the rest is up to you, and I'll explain that in, in, in a little bit. So Verizon, let's skip that, because it's not gonna, not gonna work with Verizon. Um, I'm gonna skip all the smaller brands and move on to the bigger ones. Uh, Sprint, as you can see, the 4G and 3G, and even the 2Gs are compatible. The only difference is what you have to do is you have to figure out which towers are located <coughs> excuse me, in your area because for example i'm not sure if you have b25 in your area or b20 if you got b20 you're good if you got b25 then you're not put it that way same thing with at&t supports the um, bands 245 and 66 and if we move on to okay we'll, we'll skip the smaller dudes uh, timo so timo again 245 66 supports 3G and supports 2G as well. So as you can see, it works with the big three, <clears throat> Timo, AT&T, as well as Sprint. Um, actually, you just saw a little bit of the slowness there, right there, see that? Anyway, let's keep, uh, let's keep talking about the networks because that's what we're talking about. So if you're on any of these smaller, smaller um, um, network carriers that run off these big three, then that's what you're going to get. So yeah, so make sure you check for these bands that they're in your area and if they are you're good to go okay so i tried playing PUBG, or well i'm trying right now and it's it's really bad actually um like really bad like you can see how oh i can't can't it's so laggy can't do this oh my goodness yeah if you want to play PUBG on this don't even think about it i already have all the settings set to lowest but nothing it's, it's just such bad frame rates 
Okay, let's stop this and play something that's more playable. Okay, so I started playing Asphalt as well. And yeah, Asphalt plays a lot better than PUBG. Oh my goodness, PUBG played so, oops, PUBG played so badly. I almost died. Oof. And as you can see, I'm using the controller, so it makes it a lot easier for me to play. And yeah. Yeah, it's still a tiny bit laggy. Like I can still sense the tiny bit of lag when I'm when I'm comparing to let's say my Mi 8, which again is a two-year-old flagship phone, but it is still a flagship. So there's that. Um, I can sense a little bit of lag. I don't know if you can see it, but I can definitely feel it as I'm playing the game. You might not be able to just because it's uh, well, it's harder to see if you're not actually controlling it. But yeah, so I would say this thing is basically good for light gaming. And anything that's not light gaming, it's not very good for. Like PUBG, even this is, I don't know, I would consider this medium gaming. Because this is a very, very well optimized game. Which means that, that it doesn't need a lot of resources to play. And it's still a tiny bit laggy. Uh, very, 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 very slight. Still very playable. And I, oh boy, here we go. Still very playable. So... Yeah. <clears throat> Finally, we'll talk about the camera, and I was very happily surprised by the camera quality. The camera quality here is actually so in, in in good lighting conditions, the camera quality is good. So take a look at these pictures. Like if you zoom in, the quality is actually decent. I would say it's actually rivaling a previous gen Redmi, not a Redmi Note, but a Redmi. So I'm actually very, very satisfied with the pictures in good lighting conditions. Uh, macro, uh, macro, micro, all the crows, they're gonna be good. Um, yeah, I'm very happy with that. Um, medium light, not so happy. Um, if you're looking at medium lights, the the photos are, they're better than before. I, I remember Yumi Digi phones back in 2018. The camera quality wasn't good, but here, the medium quality or the medium light photos, I think is passable. Low light is still pretty bad. Um, they have really haven't improved that much. So I really wouldn't recommend you using this for low light photography. And then basically there's other camera modes in this thing that I really wouldn't recommend you use. Like portrait mode, not very good. Night mode, not very good. Panorama mode, sure, yeah, that works. The stitching is okay. Um, I would basically recommend you use picture mode and that's basically it. Uh, video mode, um, it's it's okay. Um, the video is a little bit, it, it doesn't focus very fast, put it that way. It doesn't focus very fast, and the exposure um, changes quite a bit as well. So it's not the ideal camera, and it, and it only shoots at 1080p, but it's, eh, it's, it's a cheap phone, so you can't really expect 4K from this phone. All right, so what do I think of this phone? What do I think? Well, um, in the past, whenever I've reviewed a Yumi Digi low-end, or not low-end, an, an entry-level phone, I've always basically said, just ignore this and go Redmi. But in this case, I actually gonna say, hold on that, because you don't necessarily wanna go Redmi. And the reason for that is because the really the only area, or the only two areas where, where the Redmi has an advantage over this is it's a little bit faster when you're swiping around, and the camera quality and low light is a little bit better. But the advantage on this side is you get stock Android. So if you're one of those guys who does not like Xiaomi's MIUI, but you want stock Android, then you go with this. And the other thing as well is that this one supports, I believe, a couple more network bands than the Xiaomi Redmi. So that's another um, situation where you might want to consider, because especially if you're in the US, you might want just, just want to go with this. Um, but and yeah, and, and this thing's pretty cheap if, if you want to check out the price and you um, you want to check out the sales Check it out in the description down below Thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you guys in the next one